2016 PRM training webinar. My name is Dennis Olson, the PR strategist at World Headquarters, and today my co-presenter is Sally Newell Cohen, Chief Operations Officer of Toastmasters International. Sally has worked for Toastmasters since 2009 and brings more than 25 years of experience in the field of communication and leadership. She is instrumental in strategic development and implementation. Sally spearheaded the organization's rebrand and Toastmasters Pathways project. Thank you so much, Sally, for being here. Thanks, Dennis. And welcome, everyone. Thank you all for joining us and taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us for this hour. We greatly value your time. So we're going to make sure that your time is well spent. First of all, congratulations on your new roles. It's very exciting. I know you're a couple of weeks into it, so this is the perfect time to be talking in depth about your role and the tools you need to be successful. Both Dennis and I have a background in PR, and so we, we, have a, uh, we realize that this is a big job for you. And we also recognize that many of you don't have a background in PR or, or a skill set in PR. So our objective during this webinar is to give you an overview of how to do your job, give you some of the tools that you need, and give you some tips along the way that we found successful for us. And hopefully that will be helpful for you. It isn't intended to be a complete review of everything you're going to do because you have resources available to you to go back and learn more. But we will give you the highlights. And we've been doing this webinar now, I think, for about five years. And in the time that we've done it, we have found that it's, in, it's resulted in increased exposure for Toastmasters, not only inside Toastmasters, but in the outside world, and particularly more local awareness for your clubs in your district. And the partnership with World Headquarters and the public relations managers around the world, it, it's made a difference in generating coverage and creating impact. And please keep in mind that we're going to refer to the materials that Dennis sent you ahead of the call. So if you have that email handy that he sent you, you'll want to pull it up. You can also access the documents on the handout section of the GoToWebinar menu. So let's dive in. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the district mission. And you know what the district mission is, but it's always good to repeat it. The district mission is to build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. Now, a district has many objectives that relate to achieving the mission, and one of those is to build membership and increase awareness of Toastmasters International and its programs within the geography of the district. And this is where you as a public relations manager fit in. The District Leadership Handbook, or Toastmasters International really, defines the role of the public relations manager as this. As a PRM, you are responsible for coordinating publicity efforts in the district and by establishing and maintaining lines of communication between the district and its members, as well as between the district and the public, you work to increase awareness of Toastmasters through all available media. And that's exactly what you do. Uh, during the next hour, we're going to discuss the responsibilities of the PRM and how you help the district achieve its objectives. We'll detail your specific responsibilities, which are protecting the brand, generating publicity and awareness of Toastmasters locally, developing and executing a successful communications plan, and participating as a member of the district leadership team. These responsibilities are referenced in the district leadership handbook on page 35. If you've not yet received your copy of the handbook, you can find it on the Toastmasters website at the URL at the bottom of your screen. It's toastmasters.org backslash DLH. We're going to go in the most depth during this webinar on generating PR and generating coverage. And Dennis will walk you through that. But first, we're going to talk about brand stewardship. A brand is an emotional connection with a product, a company, or a service. A brand articulates and differentiates itself by stating what makes it unique to that product, company, or service. It's who we are and why we matter. So the Toastmasters brand is built on more than 90 years of experience helping individuals become better communicators and leaders. Who we are is the organization of clubs around the world. Why we matter is because the experience in those clubs enables and empowers our members to become more skilled communicators and leaders and, and 
most importantly, to build the confidence. So a brand has a consistent and unified identity, both visually and in its language. And by using branded materials in consistent language, our brand is strengthened. A brand clearly communicates an organization's goals and its messages in a consistent voice. A brand also defines an organization, its products and services, and it differentiates an organization from its competitors. So everyone that's involved in Toastmasters and everything that we say and do represents the Toastmasters brand. As a public relations manager, this is especially important for you because you have the opportunity to have great impact on the organization because you represent all Toastmasters members, from the club to the district, and even internationally when you communicate about the organization. As a result, you're more responsible for guarding the organization's image and reputation than most people in the district. It's a heavy responsibility, but it's an important responsibility as well. So let's talk about the brand elements and the pieces that you work with particularly. Please keep in mind, first and foremost, that a brand isn't a logo. A logo is a visual representation of the brand, but that's, that's all it is. It's a graphic element. The core elements of the Toastmasters brand include our services, members, products, and the promise. So our services are really the club meetings, the training that we provide, the education programs, and conferences and conventions. Our members aren't just our current members. They're also our past members and our future members. Products is a huge category. It's every tangible item that says Toastmasters. That's part of the brand. This includes the things that you could buy from the Toastmasters website, manuals, plaques, cups, pens, mugs, but it's also the magazine, websites, social media platforms, blogs, videos, podcasts, banners, anything that's created at the district level as well. If it says Toastmasters International on it, then it's representative of the brand. And then finally, the promise. There are two ways to look at the promise. There's the Toastmasters promise that each member agrees to when they become a member, but there's also the brand promise. In 2015, it actually in September of 2015, the board announced a brand promise for Toastmasters. And a brand promise is the expected tangible benefit. It's basically what we say we're going to do for each member, and it's the expectation that we set for them of that, what they would receive if they become a member of a club. A brand promise is most often used as an internal statement that's kind of a rallying message for all internal stakeholders that helps to drive communication and performance. A strong brand promise achieves three goals. It conveys a compelling benefit, it is authentic and credible, and it must be kept every time. So the Toastmasters brand promise that the board initiated last year is empowering individuals through personal and professional development. So if you reflect back on those three goals, it it conveys a compelling benefit to the individual. It's authentic and it's credible. Empowering individuals to grow personally and professionally is what we do. It is authentic and it's credible, it's demonstrable. We can prove it through the experiences of, of millions of members through the, the years of Toastmasters. It also must be kept every time. And that's the active part that comes in where we all have to work to ensure that that happens. Now, please keep in mind that this brand promise is not a tagline. What it is, is it's a promise that we should all work toward achieving. Now, our organization also has a fiduciary and legal responsibility to protect the brand. Beyond just saying that we'll protect the brand, we are obligated to protect the brand. And you have the same responsibility as a public relations manager. If our branding isn't consistent, if we aren't continually ensuring that we're using it properly, and, that, and if we aren't protecting it, then legally we could lose ownership of those brand elements and allow our competitors to use some of our same wording and look and feel. So we don't ever want that to happen. Because from a branding perspective, this means that we're really only as strong as our weakest club and how they represent the brand. To, to have a consistent global perception of our organization, what we do, and why we matter, it's critical that we present a united front through our branding. 
there's, there's a resource that you can use to ensure that you're doing this. The Toastmasters brand manual will help you navigate the details. If you haven't already seen the brand manual, go online and uh, download a copy. You'll find it at toastmasters.org backslash brand manual. Some of the details that you'll want to find in there are information about the tagline. Where leaders are made is the tagline for the entire organization and should be the only tagline that you use. Please note that it communicates one of the benefits that our organization provides. It doesn't imply a shift in focus from communication to leadership. What it means is really looking back at the communications. It's the journey that our members typically travel on. And you, you join, you start to become stronger as a communicator. You find your voice. As you're finding your voice, people tend to seek you out more for your thoughts, for your opinions, and to contribute more. And that's where leadership also emerges through that confidence, that strength in communication, building confidence, takes you into more of a leadership role. That's really what's implied by the tagline. Now, I know that some, um, some districts use a conference theme, and that's fine. But that should be your conference theme and not the tagline for your, your district. It shouldn't be different than the organizational tagline. It just creates confusion when you do this. Also, the official logo or word mark are the only images that you should use to represent the organization. So if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you're going to see two graphic elements. The first is right in the middle to the right side, and it just says Toastmasters International. That's what we call a word mark. That's the word mark that we use in all times and in all uses. It's a very specific font with very specific spacing in colors. That is the word mark you should use. You shouldn't create a new word mark. It's easily downloadable from the Toastmasters website. And then right underneath it is the logo. And what the logo is, is the word mark on top of a globe. It is the only logo that you should be using to represent Toastmasters International. Custom logos and custom line uh, taglines should not be created. And it may feel a little bit restrictive. However, there is creativity built in. So if, when you look at the brand manual, you're going to see a color palette. You're going to see a variety of fonts. You'll see rays and different graphic elements that you can use to customize what you create. Now, if you go outside of that, what I would recommend is that you contact our brand and trademarks team to ensure that you have authorization to use different graphic elements. Uh, please keep in mind that we're just giving you an overview of brand stewardship you're soon going to be invited to watch a training video that goes into much greater detail on all of these items. But in the meantime, you can email brand at toastmasters.org with any questions that you have about the brand. Marla will be happy to help you. Also, if you see um, above, if you look at your screen, and above brand at toastmasters.org, you'll see a very long URL that I won't read out to you. But it's where you can find logos, images, and templates that you can use in any material that you create. Okay, the next area of responsibility is public relations and publicity. And your first question may be, what is public relations? And here is a definition that we found most effective. Good public relations is the practice of creating, promoting, and maintaining a favorable image of an institution among its audiences through the use of a variety of communication channels and tools. And that's what you do. What you're striving to do as a public relations manager is create a positive image of Toastmasters International and the clubs in your local area through a variety of channels, whether it's social media, whether it's news media, broadcast or radio or print, whether it's working with bloggers, whether it's communication in your community. That's what you do. So how does this impact the goals that the organization is trying to achieve and your district is trying to achieve? In, in a couple of different ways. First of all, good PR attracts potential members. It attracts interest. And you do that when you attract interest, you build membership. Good PR also leads to public awareness, publicity, and coverage, which benefits clubs, individual members, and ultimately the district. And then also, by informing the public about club and district events, you're able to enhance the perception of, of Toastmasters, our clubs, and our members. Now remember that you don't have to do this alone. 
the district director, the club growth director, and the region advisor are all there to help you to understand the district's marketing needs and how to accomplish these goals. Now, Dennis is going to take you through a little bit more about public relations and talk about the difference between PR and advertising. Thank you, Sally. People often get confused about the difference between PR and advertising. One of the great benefits of PR is that it's low cost and it has a high impact. Your district likely has an advertising budget and might decide to use it, but you'll also find that PR is a cost-effective way of publicizing the district. And here are the reasons why. The function of PR is to build relationships and generate goodwill, which ultimately establishes credibility. Marketing and advertising focus on selling or purchasing. The result of a good PR program is free publicity. Marketing and advertising are paid space and time. So if nothing else, remember that PR is generally free and marketing and advertising cost money. For example, you could spend $10,000 for a tiny ad in the New York Times, or you could use PR to generate a free article in the New York Times, which people are far more likely to read, believe, and act on. Now that we understand the difference between PR and advertising, we can build a program. So let's discuss how to build your PR program. Your efforts should focus on promoting Toastmasters within the geographic area of your district. So think about what might be newsworthy. Some examples might be stories about how speaking or leadership skills helped a person in the community to overcome an obstacle or gain a job promotion, keynote speakers at district events, educational opportunities at district conferences, speech contests and winners, new club officers, programs for the public, and international officer visits. Now we're going to discuss some examples of best practices that you can emulate. Patrick McGinty is the PRM for District 2 representing half of Western Washington State. Patrick's already done a great job of securing local media coverage for Vladimir Balabanov, District 2's International Speech Contest representative. Patrick has worked with the local media to secure news coverage for Balabanov in newspapers and online news websites, and he's determined to get him a segment on Seattle television leading up to the International Speech Contest next month in Washington, D.C. These are the media outreach tips that Patrick offers. First, you want to create a story angle. So you can write a press release with a catchy headline that's going to generate interest from reporters. Also use mondotimes.com to research media contacts and send the news release to specific reporters. Always remember to respond to media inquiries promptly and respect their deadlines. Also send the press release and media pitches via email on weekdays and avoid pitching on weekends and Monday mornings because the reporters will be inundated with emails. If your first pitch to the media is unsuccessful, be persistent but don't harass the reporter. Another success story comes out of District 86 in Ontario, Canada. Kathy Herschel was the district PRM during the previous term, and she was very successful at generating news coverage for her district by leveraging events and special visits. During Kathy's term, she was able to secure coverage for Toastmasters International Director Ross Mackay, as well as a number of, uh, of district speech contests and district clubs. Now, this created great exposure for the organization and for District 86. Kathy recommends leveraging opportunities such as an international director visit or district conference and pitch those things to the local media. Visit the public relations section of our website and fill out the news release templates to promote events and achievements like an open house, a communication achievement award, or a corporate recognition award. Also use free news release distribution services such as PR log to increase the exposure of each news release. And work with VPPRs to help them pitch their local media and promote their clubs and its members. And we'll have more on all these topics later. So we know that as a PRM, your role and responsibilities include coordinating with the local news media, contributing to website content and newsletters, serving as a spokesperson, and publicizing district news and activities to various audiences. Now let's talk about the tools and resources available to help you achieve your goals. PR tools such as social media and videos and resources like Let the World Know can help you get the word out and raise awareness about Toastmasters activities and benefits both to internal and external audiences. Let the World Know is going to be the number one resource for you. You can easily access it online and download it as a PDF. It's a comprehensive overview of the public relations function and covers all the elements of conducting an effective public relations program. The manual walks you through making a plan and setting goals, identifying target audiences and tactics for an effective publicity campaign. Remember, this webinar is just an overview. You can get more details in that handbook. 
Next is the public relations section of Toastmasters website, which contains information, templates, and it's a great resource. You'll find a variety of helpful items, including a link to let the world know, sample news releases, where you'll find different fill-in-the-blank news releases that you can download and complete and then send to your local media. You'll also find a list of PRM and VPPR responsibilities. And this page will also include a link to the recording of this webinar once it's available. In addition, many resources exist to help you promote Toastmasters once you know the angle you want to take. There are a series of time-tested video tips available in our video library and on the Toastmasters YouTube channel. The Club Experience video can also be found here. This video does a great job of showing what goes on at a Toastmasters meeting. It might be a useful tool for you to share with the media. Now we'll talk about social media. Social media is a must for generating awareness. The goal is for district and club leaders to define the purpose and target audience using social media, which will increase the visibility and the number of clubs using social media channels. Create a Facebook fan page or a Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, or YouTube page to share information and connect. Because these channels are public, it's critical to adhere to brand guidelines. Toastmasters International uses these five channels effectively, and each one has unique benefits and features. Facebook is used to share pictures, videos, and club posts with other members. You can build a fan page to connect with an unlimited number of group members or fans. You can use Twitter as an opportunity to announce club meetings, congratulate members, share special events, and drive people to your website or district conference. Or just share tips on how to attract prospective members to a club. Be sure to link to your website or news releases. Use Hootsuite and other tools such as Bitly to shorten links. Also use hashtags, which are keywords preceded by a pound symbol when talking about something, and the at symbol when you're talking to someone. Consider using these popular Toastmasters hashtags. Hashtag Toastmasters, hashtag where leaders are made, hashtag public speaking, hashtag communication, hashtag leadership to track specific conversations. LinkedIn offers a place where members can participate in discussions or provide advice in a more professional setting. Instagram is a great place to share club photos and videos to your audience. You can also build a profile to connect with members and potential members, both inside and outside of your district. YouTube is a tool to upload original video content and share it with your members and for the world to see. Now on your screen is a look at some district and club social media accounts that are good examples of their work. And please remember to post on your networks regularly to keep members engaged. You can find Toastmasters official media sites at www.toastmasters.org backslash social networking. Now if you have any questions about social media, email socialmedia at toastmasters.org and our team will assist you. You can also find answers to your social media questions in Let the World Know. Social media offers an additional avenue for districts and clubs to interact. You'll often find it more convenient to compose and engage with others through Facebook messaging and Twitter notifications than to call or email them. District and club social media pages help engage members with local and custom content. Facebook and LinkedIn are more effective channels for internal communication, while Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube do a better job of connecting with external audiences. So once you've decided what to promote, you have to decide who is the target audience for your message. A target audience is any person or group who has an actual or potential interest in the message, represents the type of person we want to be interested in the message, and can be an influencer. As a PRM, you have three distinct audiences, radio stations, television, and online publications. And you also have prospective members, which is the public and includes corporations and the community. And then your last audience is current Toastmasters members. As PRM, your main focus is to get local media coverage, not national or international coverage. I focus on that. By focusing on who your target audience is, you can start to define which media you should approach. You'll need to find out what are the outlets, what do they read, and what do they listen to. Now this takes research, but once you've identified who they are, create a list of your local media, including appropriate contacts and the correct spelling of their names. Mondotimes.com is a free international website that allows you to find local media outlets. After that, you'll need to learn how the media in your market like to be approached. Our next topic is what messages will be appealing to both the media and to their audiences. So we've covered a lot of background and PR principles. Now we're going to get into the tactics. 
You have your media list, but before you begin contacting them, you'll need a toolkit. Always have a complete and accessible press kit available for the media. The official Toastmasters Digital Media Kit is available in the Toastmasters Media Center. This kit is useful for events, media, and more. The materials in this kit include a Toastmasters fact sheet, a Toastmasters history page, organizational bios, a map with location, and the features, benefits, and value fact sheet, which is used for corporate visits. You can customize this slightly for your district. News releases will be the most important of all the collateral pieces you create for the media because you're telling a story of Toastmasters and offering a topic. It enables you to reach all of your local media at the same time. It's cost effective and it allows you to control the message. So the image on your screen now is the press release announcing 2015 World Champion of Public Speaking, Muhammad Katani. You were emailed a copy of this release, so if you have it handy, please follow along. But you can also access the release in the handout section of the GoToWebinar menu. So there's a specific format the media wants to receive. Here are some tips for formatting a news release. Toastmasters International Letterhead, which can be found in the Logos Templates section of the website. Uh, the release is always typed for a professional presentation. Your contact info with your name, title, and telephone number appear at the top right section of the press release. The Toastmasters International Boilerplate, which is a standard summary of the organization, is above the pound symbols at the bottom. The boilerplate is updated each July by World Headquarters and is a one paragraph summary of the organization. This is not something you should customize for your district. And finally, the pound symbols below the content signals the end of the release. This time we'll look at a news release announcing Jim Kikachi as Toastmasters International President and dissect the content. You're also emailed a copy of this, but it's also in the handout section of the menu. First is the head and subhead. Always include Toastmasters in the headline. It should be a short, descriptive, clear headline. One tip from personal experience is to write your headline last. Then you'll list the dateline, which is the city-state origination of the news. Open with an attention-getting lead, answering who, what, when, why, and how. The most important information is presented early, and subsequent paragraphs present supporting information. In the body of the release, appeal to the target audience. Also use a meaningful quote to illustrate an idea through an important figure's voice. Emphasize central selling points with bullets. Include a call to action, such as go to a website to find a club to visit or to learn more about your announcement. Make sure you check for, for accuracy and errors. Make sure there's no typos, no imaginative spelling or punctuation, as those things have a very negative impact on your credibility. So now that you've written your news release, how do you pitch it? Here's how to craft a pitch, which is a persuasive way to sell your story. A pitch can be used alone or with a news release. A pitch is an invitation to reporters to cover a topic or a local event. A good pitch presents a compelling and clear case about a subject of interest to the reporters, readers, or viewers. Now, I want to congratulate the PRMs who have already secured media coverage for their district. When you started your role as PRM earlier this month, you received an email from me asking you to promote your local speech contest finalist. And I want to thank those of you who hit the ground running and have already received coverage for your district and its contestants. Great job. Now let's review the basics of a pitch. They include the email subject line, which is a short, catchy subject line with no punctuation marks. Next is the greeting or salutation. If the email is addressed to an individual, use a warm greeting with their first or last name. If you don't personalize the email, people will think they're part of a mass email and they'll likely disregard it. Then craft two or three short paragraphs. First, introduce your news and explain why it's unique. Get to the point since you only have a few seconds to grab the reader's attention. Then tell the person how your news will benefit his or her audience. Similar to the format of a news release, address who, what, when, where, why, and how. If you have a link to your news release on a website, this is a good place to include it. You'll end the pitch with a call to action such as RSVP for the event, visit a website, or how to get in touch with you for more details. Be sure to indicate that you'll follow up with them. At the bottom is your signature where you should include your name, contact info, and link to your district's website. Now we're going to take a look at a pitch I wrote to announce the 2016 International Speech Contest semifinalists. You should notice that the subject line, 98 Toastmasters Advance in the World's Largest Speech Contest, is short and it grabs the reader's attention. I wrote this pitch to pique a reporter's interest so that he or she requests more information about local contestants who've made it this far 
and could potentially advance to the finals at next month's convention in Washington, D.C. The call to action is to arrange an interview after reading the news release, which was placed below the pitch in the email. So now that you've identified your market and created your news release or pitch, what do you do? Always refrain from sending attachments to reporters because they either won't open them or the email will get stuck in a spam filter. Instead, include your news release in the body of the email, placing it below the pitch and signature line. Then after some time has passed, follow up with a telephone call and reference your email and ask if they're interested in hearing more. If so, be accessible and try to provide what they ask for. If they're not interested, don't be discouraged. Thank them for their time and ask them to consider you the next time they need to speak with someone about public speaking, communication, or leadership skills. Always remember to be professional and keep the brand in mind. You only have one opportunity to make a good and lasting impression with members of the media. So we just talked about when we contact the media. There's also going to be times when the media contacts world headquarters first. For example, a few months ago, a reporter with the Wall Street Journal wanted to interview some Toastmasters members in New York City for a story she was working on about public speaking faux pas. To fulfill the reporter's request, World Headquarters worked with District Director and the PRM of District 46 to connect the reporter with members of the district who were then interviewed and quoted in the article. This story resulted in some great national publicity for the organization and for District 46. Sally, would you say this happens often? Uh, it happens occasionally. It doesn't happen every day, but it's a great opportunity for us. And if, if that does happen, and oftentimes larger media will connect with World Headquarters before going to the district, then Dennis will connect you immediately. He'll start with the public relations manager. If we don't hear from you quickly, then we'll also go to the district director because it's key, especially in these situations, to react quickly. It's also important to make sure that if you are selecting members to speak with the media, that they positively reflect the brand and the, what you were trying to achieve. And if you need any help working with the larger media and how, how to go about it and who you should actually bring into it, talk with Dennis. He's going to be happy to help you. Now, at the beginning of the webinar, we talked about internal and external responsibilities. The public relations programs are external. But let's also talk a little bit about your internal focus. Because you are part of the district leadership team and you work directly with the club growth director, the program quality director, and the district director. You all work together to support the district and the, ultimately the organization. But what you specifically do is you work to inform, persuade, and motivate your internal audience, and that's the members. So your job in doing this is to work really closely with the club growth director, participate in the marketing committee, participate in training or as a trainer, contribute to the creation of the district newsletter, and assist the club growth director in maintaining the district website. Now that's if they need you to do so. Some districts have many volunteers and they have web editors and they have other people that can participate, but if you're in a smaller district, with fewer resources, you may be asked to help here. You want to make sure that you're also working with the program quality director to appropriately and thoroughly promote district events. Now, not all districts um, open their conferences to the public, but for those that do, it's a great opportunity to generate awareness and bring in attendees. Uh, you also want to understand the role and um, of the district director and support their objectives. You want to understand the district's goals. Be sure to establish a communication protocol so that you have alignment and so that you know what the district director's objectives are and they also know what you're working on so you can support each other. You also want to make sure that you clearly understand the district calendar because there's opportunities all year long for you to promote different members, different contests, different events that are happening in the district. Be sure that you also work with your region advisor. Their job is to support the districts, to coach and to mentor the district leaders. And they can help you with public relations strategies, particularly as they relate directly to the marketing strategies. Now, by working with all of these leaders, you're able to share your goals, your objectives, and to create a successful PR and communications program for your district. Now, in addition to working with your district leadership team, you also work with other members of the district as well. 
So let's recap. Your role and responsibility as a public relations manager is to coordinate with the news media, serve as a spokesperson when necessary, publicize district news and activities to various audiences. And I only briefly mentioned it. We definitely didn't address this in great detail, but your role may also include contributing to the website and the newsletter content. It's also important to know what your responsibilities are not so that you don't get pulled away from your focus or pulled away from your objectives. So here's what you're not responsible for. Developing outreach and retention efforts within existing community and corporate clubs or in new markets. That's something that the club growth director does with the members of their team they've selected. Uh, you're not responsible to create a marketing plan. You may be asked to contribute aspects of it through your communication planning, your PR plan, but you're not responsible for creating it. You're also not responsible for managing district recognition activities, managing the club coach program. You're not responsible for recruiting, training, or supervising the club building teams or recruiting, training, and supervising club sponsors, mentors, or coaches. Your focus should be on internal and external communications. Really, your responsibilities can be summed up in three words. Create, coordinate, and communicate. Because you create opportunities, you create materials, news releases, and possibilities, most importantly, for the district. You coordinate with the club growth director, the district director, and your region advisor, as well as other members of the district team to fulfill the mission of the district. You also communicate to the public and to the membership through local media and district communications. So we've covered a lot of ground today in a, in a short period of time. And we're hopeful that it's given you the tools and the context to feel comfortable starting to build your public relations plan and starting to work with the media specifically. Be sure to go back and look at some of the materials. The District Leadership Handbook will give you a wealth of information, not just about your role, but about the roles of others in the district. And also look at Let the World Know. It's a great resource for you. Become familiar with the brand manual, as well as the public relations section of the Toastmasters website. And don't forget, we've recorded this session so that you're always going to be able to go back and reference what we talked about and some of the tips and tools that Dennis shared. He will um, make sure that you're aware of when the recording is available. Most importantly, thank you for your time today. We wish you great luck in the coming year and great success. All right. If you have any more questions regarding this training or, or just PR-specific questions, please email pr at toastmasters.org. And to all of you who are watching and listening, we want to thank you again for your time and wish you the best over the coming year. Thank you.